so this is our flower garden. And that's the ski mountain. And you can hear in the background a band playing. This is really a magical place to live. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Victoria. Hi, Nancy. So, one of two bars is playing that music. No, 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 no. Hi, Sue Chapman. Doesn't it look amazing? Hi, Tracy. Turned out nice, didn't it? Sabrina's doing fine. Sabrina is loving life. She's, she's got no problem. I'd like to play Frisbee with her, but I, that would not be fair. So, but she would have, she would. She, she knows no fear. She's just, ah, here. And I think she looks adorable in that red collar and that red boots. It reminds me of Margo. And there's, <coughs> oh, oh, whoa, 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 what, whoa, 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 whoa. Do you want to play with Sabrina? <coughs> Chloe wants to play with Sabrina. Hold on, I'm sorry. Wow, that was that was exciting. Chloe, 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 where are you? Come here, Chloe. Are you the boss? Chloe, the boss. How you doing, Chloe? Do you want to play with Chloe? You want to be a hobo? Who wants to be a hobo? Chloe, are you going to be a hobo with me? Is it hobo time? Can you turn it down a little bit? Nope. Come on, Surely she, um, she, well, I tore her pad off by like opening that door there. Her pad got caught underneath it. And she was like, oh, come on. We gonna make some room. Come on. Come on, girl. Make room. I'm sorry. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on in. In, Chloe. Get in. Come on. Chloe is so skinny. It freaks me out. Come on. Chloe. So basically, I shut the door and her foot was under it or she's coming towards it. It was a freakish accident. It was up here one morning and um, two mornings ago. And I feel horrible about it. <laughs> Patricia, that's funny. Let your friends watch. I don't know. I, it's hobo time. Chloe's coming. Oh, I was looking for that. Chloe, no. Chloe's trying to eat through the cans of food. Chloe, come on. 
She, Chloe should get whatever food she wants because she's extremely skinny. Come on. Okay, so up here, let me show you the progress that we got going on up here. I had tiny poodles. I also raised Afghan hounds, wonderful dogs. Doesn't seem to bother her so good. So I am planting a um, green roof situation here. So instead of lo out looking over gravel, you know, I'll have all these beautiful, um, whatever you call it. So, and then pretty soon, oh, hey, no, 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 no playing. Pretty soon, all those vines that you see will block out that entire view of, you know, that hotel. So when you're here, good girl, Sabrina. Good girl. So I know everyone's super concerned about, um, you know, the dogs on the deck. I don't know what to tell you. I appreciate the concern. Um, the only thing I could say is um, I've now raised several dogs here, and they've had access to the deck, and they've never exhibited any behavior that leads me to believe that they are going to jump. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Um, and maybe your dogs are, would jump, but my dogs would not jump. These two are adorable because they, they play. Um, get her! No play, no too much activity. Too much activity. So, Sabrina is fine. You know, um, you know the breeder says, and I agree, that the less activity, the better. But... Um, we're going to listen to the vet who says no hikes, no hard abrasive surfaces on her pet, a paw. Uh, but otherwise, you know, don't put her in a crate, you know, um, in effect. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm going to listen to the vet, but I'm going to be hypersensitive. So she's doing, as you can tell, fine. Hey, Sabrina, not in the water feature. She's not allowed in water. So we've emptied all of the water features completely. And it rained, so taking the tarp off my my bed. Oh look at her. She's like there you go. Chloe, come here. I'm going to bed. I'm tired. It can fell. Cardiovascular attacks. And it lowers my A1C with diet and exercise. Guardians can cause serious side effects, including dehydration, genital yeast or urinary. Whoa, whoa. And sudden kidney problems. Ketoacidosis. She jumped. A serious side effect she jumped fatal. all the way across. A rare but life threatening bacterial Susie, come here. in the skin of the perineum could occur. Stop taking Guardians. Susie, and come. Doctor right away if you have symptoms of this bacterial infection. Ketoacidosis or an allergic reaction. Do not take Jardians if you are on dialysis or have severe kidney problems. Taking Jardians with a sulfonylurea or insulin may cause low blood sugar. So, that would... Susie. The read-in for Rachel. Good evening, Joy. Thank you very much, Chris. Have a great rest of the night. Thank you, you too. Susie, come. Now, over what's happening this summer, over these debates, that doesn't speak to our party. Uh, I think the themes, by the way, the policy plans are really important, but remember, uh, we have not always seen the person with the best policy plans become the President of the United States, uh, case in point where we are right now. We need folks that can speak to the heart, the gut, as well as to the Susie, head, come here. And that can have the kind of Susie. rally, unite, inspire, and engage everyone in this party. And I think that that sentiment, the person who is best at, at calling to our common aspirations, uh, I think that's going to be the kind of person that can energize young folks and get, you know, my mom's generation, uh, uh, as you said, the church going African American ladies uh, to, to out of their seats like that, like the pastor does, uh, uh, coming to the crescendo. That's what's going to be, I think, the excitingness about this election is who's going to call uh, to the soul of our party and our nation best. There's a lot of time for that to evolve. Uh, I think I think Trump spoke, spoke to our darkness. 
the, the person who's going to be the best one that's going to bring the light. All right, uh, New Jersey Senator and 2020 presidential candidate Cory Booker, good luck to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And up next, more fallout from last night's debate, including a warning from one prominent Democrat to back off Obama. Oh, it's raining. I try to just took all that off. Dot com. That's it. That's it. Ex it's gonna be gorgeous, yeah. Sure to have an enormous kick me sign on him. That was expected. But surprisingly, it was President Barack Obama's legacy that also took a few blows. You saw it when Julian Castro went after the Veep over the high number of deportations during the Obama years. Yeah, the new truth is gone. It looks like one of us has learned the lessons of the past and what has it. Let me begin by telling you. How's the truth? Let me just start out by answering that question. My immigration plan would also fix the broken legal immigration system because we do. He did a good job. Secondly, the only way that we're going to guarantee that these kinds of family separations don't what do you happen think? in the future is that we need to repeal this law. So what we need are politicians that actually have some guts. I mean, I really felt New York Mayor Bill de Blasio quite self-conscious. I never realized how it must feel to just walk through life being self-conscious about your appearance. I don't think I'm particularly handsome, but I don't think I'm unattractive, but you take one tooth out and you give me a weird haircut, I look like crap. A bad hair day you can maybe get by with occasionally. Bad hair and no tooth day, you look like an idiot. Education level goes down and it affected my outlook. I couldn't talk to people and smile because <laughs> you know, I, I honestly thought they, the first thing they would think is, oh, my God, that guy's got no tooth. Or didn't he have a tooth? I had my mom smile. That's the sweetest thing you could ever say. My mom was awesome. Turn the camera away from me. I, seriously, I don't know if you want, but I'm happy to answer questions and stare at the sunset with you. Because I've seen enough sunsets to know this one is going to be spectacular. Within about 10 minutes, this guy's going to turn a whole bunch of different colors. Chloe's having a really bad water with Do I see tons of stars? Oh my God. Well, let me put it this way. When I look up, I am already at 6,000 feet high, which is as high as Denver. It's high, it's a ski resort. And there's a dark sky ordinance, so there's no light allowed. Um, I don't know what time it is, someone else would know. Um, I'd have to turn my watch off, but it's mountain time, so it's an, two hours earlier than uh, Eastern time. So if it's 10 o'clock Eastern, it's eight o'clock here. Um, so I'm happy to answer any, any questions. Um, hi, Pamela. Hi, Consuela. Consuela, 8.30. What, next question is, what time does it get dark here? At close to 10, believe it or not. It will be light until 10. And then, uh, you know, stars, you look up, it, I don't know, the last time you went camping, do you remember looking up and seeing stars that you've never seen before? Well, that's what it's like here every single night. You look up, and there's just tons of stars. And 
shooting stars and you can make out the Big Dipper and North Star and, and I mean it's just you know can you hear the music from the bar next door Oh yeah, Cynthia. I, I you know I used to live in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Very rarely, because the city is so bright. You know, you 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 get stars, you just can't see them. How did I end up there? Here, that's a great question. Um, uh, you want the long version or the short version of that story? I never got a telescope. No, not a proper one. I have binoculars, but no telescope. If you can recommend one, then I'll bite the bullet once I fix my business. Um, had a bad day. This is what I needed. Why'd you have a bad day, Joanne? I'm sorry about that. I had a bad day yesterday, truth be told. Today was a little better. Hopefully tomorrow will be even a little better from there. What do you guys want to see? I'll turn the camera towards... There, there's a little one out there. You want to see the sunset? The, she loves sitting up there on that um, skylight. That's her thing. Is your day getting any better, Joanne? Oh my God, that sunset's amazing. All right, I'll show it to you in a sec. Yeah, she just like, she likes to slide around on that thing. Hi, Benita. Yeah, it's fun sharing this with you. This, I mean, honestly, this is gonna be one of those spectacular sunsets. All kinds of small issues never ended. Better now, good. Doesn't that suck when the insignificant things just consume so much unnecessary mind share and uh, aggravation? You guys are gonna be treated to a really spectacular scene. Oh, Sue Chapman, I cannot wait. We are, Laura and I are so excited. We talk about you all the time, to be honest with you. And Annie, of course. It means so much to us that you're coming here. Hey! What did you bring? Okay. One time she jumped up here and brought, like, a piece of shit. Shit toy. Can you imagine this being your view right now? So Sue, you know, let, let's in advance, let's talk about, you know, dinner Thursday night together, if you, if you want. Um, um, oh, look at her go. We have plenty of time in advance and I, I wanna give you a list of things to consider doing. Um, I don't know what activities you like to do. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. The press. I'm feeling raindrops.
I'd expect you would go ahead and say whatever was said privately with him. That's not what I do. What I do say to you is he moved to fundamentally change the system. That's what he did. That's what he did. But it, much more has to be done. Then New Jersey Senator Cory Booker slammed Biden for hitching his wagon to Obama's success. Mr. Vice President, you can't have it both ways. You invoke President Obama more than anybody in this campaign. You can't do it when it's convenient and then dodge it when it's not. It was almost like there were 11 candidates up there, the 10 you could see, and the legacy of our 44th president. The Democratic candidate's decision to challenge President Obama's record drew a warning from some of his allies. Obama's first attorney general, Eric Holder, tweeted afterward, to my fellow Democrats, be wary of attacking the Obama record. Build on it, expand on it, but there is little to be gained for you or the party by attacking a very successful and still popular Democratic president. Joining us now is Corrine Jean-Pierre, chief public affairs officer at MoveOn.org, and Adrian Elrod, former senior advisor to the Hillary Clinton campaign. Thank you both for being here. I'm going to come to you first, Corrine, because that was your boss that <laughs> they were talking indeed, about last indeed. night. Did you, did you have the same reaction that um, Eric Holder had to the way things went down? Absolutely. I had the same exact reaction. I think we were even talking about it uh, yesterday while we were watching the debate, and it was kind of shocking to see. Look, no one's uh, record is above scrutiny or debate. No one is saying that, mm -hmm. right? I think that it's fair to ask questions about deportation. It's fair to, to try and change the health care system. All of that is fair. The I'm giving political advice, right? The political advice is it is not a smart strategy to go after the Democrat who is the most popular in your party, which is President Barack Obama, by a mile. And he's popular with African Americans, which is a, a community that we need to win, not just the nomination, right, for those candidates that are running, but also the general election to beat Donald Trump. And so they have to figure out a way to talk about the vision to move this country forward without attacking D Obama's legacy because that will be problematic. Here's something, right? We know Donald Trump is in o Ohio today. We just gave him, they just gave him a talking point, right? Oh, yeah, de Democrats don't think, you know, uh, or think that Obama did a bad job. Like, that's, that's the, the talking point that they're giving Donald Trump. And here's the thing, when you're litigating your last Democratic president and not Donald Trump, that's problematic. The 11th person on that, at that stage, on that stage, should not have been Obama. It should have been Donald Trump. Yeah. And that's what was missing. And, and you know, Adrian, um, and to the point of Obama being popular, um, you know, Donald, uh, Barack Obama is the last guy to win a huge electoral mar margin as well as a huge uh, margin of the popular vote. Uh, he won 51%. He won a clear win, 51% in 2012 and 20 uh, 2000. 16, it went below, right? And so President Obama won by 10 million votes the first time. He's extremely popular. He's got like 95, 94% popularity or higher than that with Democrats. Just as a political matter, should there be a Democratic yes, version of the 11th Cynthia, Commandment? Yes, Cynthia. They you come back every year. Of your, of, your, of the former Democratic president, you say, this is the model and we want to build on whatever he did, but you just, you never attack him. Yeah, Joy, I certainly think so. I mean, I can't quite figure out exactly what the strategy was with some of these campaigns last night. And it should be no surprise, of course, that Karina and I both agree on this. I mean, when you're doing debate prep, when you're going into meet with a candidate to talk about how we're going to approach the debates, what attacks you're going to lodge, how you're going to draw a contrast, um, you know, it's, it's fine to do that. And of course, when you're the front runner like Joe Biden, you're going to be the one, as you indicated, who has the kick me sign on your back. But there is a way to do this where you're not attacking every single policy monumental. Some of these policies, of course, being very monumental, like the passage of Obamacare, that President Obama, who has a, still a 97% approval rating, that you can go about attacking these policies, criticizing them without attacking the person who actually... There's going to be a office. thunderstorm. Some of the candidates on the, on the stage last night, some folks, this is probably going to be their last debate, in perhaps Mayor Bill Blasio, was in a Hail Mary mode trying to figure out how can I still you know, have a viral moment that might catapult me to the next debate. Um, but I'm not sure that going at it the, wi the way that they did made a lot of sense. And to your point, look, it does give Do Donald Trump a talking point tonight. I'm sure he's going to go um, into his rally and, and, and talk about the fact that he was not really the topic of the debate last night. It was all these Democrats fighting over Obama's policies, which most of which were very popular. So it didn't make a lot of sense to me, and I hope I see some improvements um, going into the third debate. Yeah, and you know, and you worked in the, in the Obama White House as well. I, I still
still, you know, I might have slight flashbacks over like the entire period of trying of them trying to pass the Affordable Care Act. It was excruciating for the Democratic Party. Does it surprise you that so many candidates seem to be kind of pinning their election chances on a redo, on doing a whole other very specific health care plan? So, like I said, Joy, I think it's okay to talk about how to make health care better, right? Of course. Um, if I told you the high today was 85 with no humidity, that's going to be pretty. give out free Lenard here? What's Lenard? Lemonade. Do you see that lightning? Might get lucky and be able to sit here and watch this rainstorm, or it might start raining. Joanne, yeah, they will. How's Laura after walking around with, she's fine. She's superwoman. Did you see the lightning? This guy is amazing. There's a 50% a chance that I will not get rained on. That's the sky above me. It looks like it's much worse all around me. Wow, did you see that lightning? Yeah, Laura is Wonder Woman. Luckiest man alive. Yeah, I love Laura too. 
more and more every single day, I swear to God. I had no idea how good I had it. It's amazing. It's beautiful, smart, hardworking, devoted, brilliant. She is my rock. She is absolutely my rock. I'd be a wreck without her. You see the lightning? Lars is a warrior. She watched that video of her from this morning. Oh, you like that story? Oh, thank you, Sue, for the vote of confidence. I'm, not, I'm a, a smart man to admit it. I don't know. I'm not a great man. I'm just a smart man. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you look at shit in front of you and can't acknowledge how amazing they are, you know. Yeah, Sue, that's the first time. Laura has ever asked to see a video and she watched the whole 30 minutes. I don't know. You think I'm gonna get wet? I mean, that's, oh. uh, that's because not many men are smart. <laughs> smart does not make you a great man. It makes you a smart man, <laughs> you know? There's a big difference. Stupid men don't realize when they have amazing women and partners in life. You lean on each other like my my hubs and I did. Yeah, well, I don't know if Laura does much leaning, but I would welcome my shoulder if she wanted. Uh oh. Oh, stop it. So Susie is freaking out. They're in the elevator. Everyone's in the elevator. I don't know where Chloe is, so. I'm gonna stay out here and expect more from your men, women. I will tell you that, I, I, straight up. You know, uh, Laura made me a great man because, you know, she expected me to be one. And when I wasn't, she would remind me. And as a result, over time, I would recognize that more often than not, like by a factor of a thousand, she was right whenever she had a recommendation. And as a result, I don't know. I have a smart man too, 37 years and no kid. No kids helps a lot, Teresa. You know, the kids are complicated. Oh my God, I can't imagine what kids would do to a marriage. I mean, the priorities all get shifted. You know, it's about your children, number one. That's the number one commitment. If you're doing it right. And if you're not, or one of you is not, then, then you have a problem. In our case, I think the collective was number one. You know, the marriage the puppies and what was in the best interest of the puppies actually made us happier. Roger has spoiled you. You deserve to be spoiled, so. Susie, come here. Susie. This is going to be 50 years. Wow. That's a long time, Jesus. 50 years. You got married young, Sue. So. 
never found your soulmate. You know, sometimes you, they find you. You know, um, stop looking. That's what I would say. I, I, I wasn't looking for Laura when I found her. Yeah, they do not like the storm, but you know what? I'm comfortable. It's not raining, and they're safe. This is... Sue, the new Jingle Bells will be here on August 18th, this ship, I believe. You see that lightning? So I've said it in a prior live stream, Sue Chapman's coming to our house for our party the day before Chloe's 15th birthday on September 28th. She's staying at the hotel across the street. If anyone else is interested in coming, just let us know before you just say yes and send an invitation because Laura will handwrite that and she's too busy to do that. You know, look at some flights. Look at how hard it is to get here. And Hotel Ketchum across the street, I recommend. Hey Sue, Tammy Sherwood um, was nice enough to send me a, a sweet email uh, you know, telling how she was concerned about Sabrina. So. Charlotte, you have no excuse. You, you, you're a day's drive away. You're ridiculous. Next year. Wow, do you hear that? Well, I've never done this. Just sat out here with the TV off. Well, that, that dentist of mine is having difficulties and he could use a hygienist. Probably a lot of people here could, so. Hey, Susie, come here. Susie, come. Oh, wow. She's scared. Yeah, no, thunder, lightning, the whole Megillah. This is going to be a, an excellent storm. I think it's getting more likely I'm going to get rained on, though. Joanne, you shouldn't say no. You should say yes, but be very discriminating. I feel like there's a show unfolding in front of me. 
anyone's taking screenshots, Sue, Sue Chapman was kind enough to take some screenshots the other day. So if you guys take screenshots, post them. I will repost them. I mean, that... Yes, Suzanne, Laura is amazing. The birds flying. Poodles sitting here. Oh, this is gonna be epic. Hi, Karen. Karen, there's your poodle. Sabrina, say hi to your poodle groomer, not groomer, breeder. She's doing fine. She's not messing with her foot. She's been... So, the life of a hobo. How are you, Karen? Karen, do you enjoy seeing your puppy grow up? I imagine you don't get to see that often, you know, in other people's houses. How are all her siblings? It's crazy. One of um, Sabrina's siblings, a, a boy, uh, is um, 35 pounds. Joanne, Patricia Joanne, I saw a 107-year-old woman on the news today. When asked her secret, she said she never married. That's funny. Wow. You guys hear that thunder? Thirty-five pounds. Wow. This has got to be one of the coolest sunsets ever. Now I feel rain. Did you see that? Felt more rain. Thank you, Cynthia. I've enjoyed it as well. Good night, Judy. can't tell if it's going to rain on me or not. Thank you, Joanne. I have Chloe, Susie in the elevator, and Sabrina. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get wet too. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, what hobo has not gotten wet? How cool is that?
Uh, Rhonda is in the Rhonda room. Oh my God, look at that. Hi, Susie. Okay, I think it's gonna rain. Come on, come on, rain. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Get, get, get. Come on, come on. Sabrina, come on. Come on, Sabrina, come on. Come on, jump. Come on, get down. Whoa. Come on. Okay, come on. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on, Susie. That's a record time. How are you doing? I'm gonna lose you here in the internet. Take the long way home. Take the long way. Susie is scared to death. It's okay. Oh my God, I just missed that. Wow. Laura. Hi, Lori. Yeah, I did make it just in time. Seriously. Thank you, Patricia. Hi, Brenda. What's happening? Is she smothering you? I have a witness. You're on the camera. Look at her. You gonna smother her? Um, I was hoboing, just like, you know, minding my own business, and it started pouring. It's, it's gorgeous. You should see it. My pleasure, Patricia. I'm an oversharer. I, thank you for letting me share. Is that not... I mean, seriously, is that not like one of the most spectacular views you've seen? Looks like an, an opal. Hi, Karen.
Uh, we have no humidity and this is fairly rare. Um, it's called Sun Valley for a reason. But when it happens, it's, it's pretty spectacular. Look at this sun. Where are you? I mean, it's amazing. Good night, Karen. Thanks for chiming in. Susie, you need a thunder shirt? Oh, she's drooling. We have a shirt for her. Can you help put it on or no? Yeah, just one of your smaller t-shirts. Where, where is the white? <laughs> Come on. In your laundry basket? Okay, Chloe's even scared. Here, there's the t-shirts. Help put them on. Come on, Su Susie. Susie, your mommy's gonna put your t-shirt on. You gonna do it or should I? She's right here, scared to death. She's right there. Come on, Susie. Come on, Susie. Mommy won't get up. She likes it. Did I get it right? Why is she bossing you around? You must have done something wrong. Can you check on Rhonda? And Chloe's nervous too. You know, she's in the other room scared to death. Well. It's pretty cool, I watched it. The whole storm from the bed and just missed it. She's taking advantage of Susie. <laughs> She's literally trying, trying to get Susie to play. Sabrina might want a shirt too, someone said. Please look at Chloe. She okay? She's not scared?
God, listen to that crazy woman. <laughs> She's hilarious. could do poodle t-shirts. Susie! Does Rhonda not need one? Look at her! She is not feeling... Oh, were you going to stop her? All right, good night, everyone. Yay, Margo. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.